Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint so it lasts this beautiful solid wood Victorian fire surround using French Eek's trim paint. Now, there's various different stages from masking and protecting the areas around it, cleaning the surfaces, sanding the surfaces, all before it being painted. So I'm going to start by covering up my carpet and masking the surrounding areas. Now, before I cover my carpet with the dust sheets, I'm going to apply some gaffer tape to the carpet around the base of the both sides of the fireplace. This ensures that we can protect the carpet better, just in case the dust sheet gets pulled away. The paintwork on the wall behind is also going to need protecting, so I'm using a 40 millimeter masking tape to go around the top, the two sides, and on the inside where the tiles are. Now the areas around are protected, I can turn my attention to the cleaning of the surface. And quite often these very dark hardwood pieces are very dirty and grimy and you can't actually see it due to the colour of it until you start cleaning it. So I'm going to mix up some sugar soap with some warm water. Now you only generally need about 10% of the sugar soap into the water. So give that a good mix up with your sponge and then you're ready to start scrubbing the surface. Now scrubbing this well really is a vital part of the preparation. As many years of smoke, grime, grease, even soot and nicotine will need removing before you attempt to paint it. And if your sponge isn't quite cutting it to get in between all the ornate details, just use a scrubbing brush or an old toothbrush. Now you can wipe off all the dirty suds with a damp cloth and then rinse the surface with some clean cold water. When you finish rinsing it, dry it off with some tissue. Oh, I can't describe how dirty and actually smelly this water is after giving that one scrub. I'm going to rinse this off and give it another scrub because I can smell cigarettes, all sorts of stuff, grime that's coming off there. Uh, it really was dirty. You know, this thing could be over 100 years old and I don't know when it was last cleaned. So I'm going to do the same method again. Give it a good scrub with the sugar soap. Wipe it off with a damp cloth. Rinse it with some clean water, then dry it off. The next stage is to sand the surface. Now, it's highly likely if you have a fire surround like this, you know, 100 odd years old, there is an oil-based varnish on there. Now, there are many paints that don't key to that without removing it all off. French Cheek's trim paint uh, and the Alfresco range will actually key to it, but we still advise a light sanding down. And with it being an oil-based product that's on there, do always wear your dust mask and try to open your doors and windows. Now, sanding items like this is not normally people's favorite job. It is time consuming. However, it's very important to get it done correctly. This is going to allow the new paint to key to it better. And even when you're applying it, it stops the paint dragging and skidding across the surfaces whilst it's wet. Now, deep patterned areas like this may be difficult to sand down. I find it better to use a wire wool brush first and then a gentle sanding pad. You might get a fair bit of dust off this, so you can either hoover it up or wipe it as you go. Once you've completed the sanding stage across the whole area, you can then give it a good inspection to see if any areas need repairing or sanding deeper. If you do have a fire or heater in situ, always turn this off and wait until the whole area around it is cold before starting any work. If the fire surround is made from a porous surface like bare brick, MDF or stone, it's a good idea to seal with French Cheek's finishing coat before painting. Now your prep is finally complete. It's ready for the fun stuff, which is the painting, of course. I'm going to apply three coats on this using three different methods. My first method is with a paintbrush, and I've got two different types of paintbrush. French Cheek's Oval Standard Paintbrush, which works brilliant with all of their chalk paints and also the very small detailed paintbrush as well. My second coat is going to be with a small radiator roller, and the third coat is going to be with a handheld paint spray. The Panther trim paint I'm using has a soft satin sheen, which I know looks fabulous on items like this. However, you can also use Alfresco to give you a matte finish or chalk wall paint for an ultra matte finish. 
Painting a fire surround is pretty much the same as painting a piece of furniture, although there are a couple of important things to remember. If your fire itself produces a lot of heat, which causes the surround to heat up, then you will need a paint that has sufficient heat resistance. As a general rule of thumb, don't paint a surface that is likely to become too hot to touch. Do not paint any areas that could come into contact with flames. This will cause discoloring and possibly peeling. Detailed areas, trims and edges are prone to drips as paint collects in the recesses and around the edges. Keep an eye out for these shortly after you've painted and if you do come across any, feather it off with a lighter paintbrush. Many styles of fireplaces like this have details and trims that can make applying paint tricky with a regular brush or roller. I prefer to use a small detail brush to help in areas like this. Once finished, wait 48 hours before switching any heat back on. This is to promote efficient initial curing as the first 48 hours is key. Then you can start to turn the heating up slowly over another couple of days. Always pay attention to the instructions on the tin, time between coats and the conditions. So that is one coat applied with a paintbrush now complete. I'm gonna leave this to dry for at least four hours before applying my second coat. My first coat is now dry and it's looking great. This is a time where you can inspect it just to check that you haven't got any drips anywhere or any areas need filling or repairing before you apply the second coat. But this for me is looking good. My second coat, I'm gonna apply using a four inch foam roller. However, this'll be a little bit quicker applying it on, but I'll still use my paintbrushes to feather it out just to help get it a little bit flatter and smoother. So you'll need a small painting tray. Pour my paint straight in out of the can. No dilution is required. Get a fair level of paint on your roller. And then you can start to apply. Spreading it across the flat areas as best as possible. This will allow you to put on more paint over a larger area a little bit quicker than the brush. With it being a foam roller, it'll allow you to get in between the detailed areas quite well. However, you'll still need the paintbrush to feather over the areas you've applied on with the roller. The second coat is dry, so it's ready for the third and final coat. But this time, I'm gonna apply using a small handheld paint sprayer. However, I will need to mask up further areas on the inside of here and around the outside. So I'm gonna be using a masking tape with polythene connected to it. It's quick and easy to apply as the masking tape is connected to one edge of the polythene. Once you put that into position, you can stretch the polythene out. It has a static effect and it clings to the wall. But it's always wise to pop a couple of pieces of masking tape on each corner to hold it into place and stop it blowing around. Using the paint spray allows you to apply the paint on a lot quicker than a brush or a roller and it works very well with French Cheeks trim paint. If you were using French Cheeks chalk wall paint or the Alfresco range, you will find that the paint will need diluted. Therefore, you'll need to do an extra coat. The key to a consistent layer of paint being applied using a paint sprayer is to continuously keep the unit moving at a consistent pace. French Heat Trim Paint is high scuff resistant, so it's perfect for fireplaces like this. It's also ideal for other internal jobs like woodwork, radiators and furniture. Now the third coat is complete, it's best to remove the masking tape before the paint has dried. So that's all you need to know to prepare and paint a fire surround like this. If you're looking for more inspiration, check us out on all social media handles. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. But if you just need to know about the vast range of products that French Cheek stock, go straight to the website, frenchcheekpaint.co.uk.